International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame event. I'm excited to be here, and uh, I'm also excited to be with my first guest, former world champion, Terry Moss. Thanks for coming by. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. What do you think? What kind of impact? Well, first of all, I think it's a long time coming with, with the uh, International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame. Personally, I don't know why it wasn't included in every other Hall of Fame. Absolutely. But I'm glad that Sue Fox um, did what she did. She formed this. This is the first year. Um, what's your thoughts on this, and what impact do you think it's going to make on women's boxing today as well as the future? Well, I totally agree with you that it's well beyond time for this to happen. Um, Sue is the front runner of everything big that happens in women's boxing right now. We can't send enough thank you out to her for um, all of her support and what she does for the sport itself. I mean, we, you know, we may be voiceless without her, and there's so much going on right now in women's boxing. It's, you know, we're under under the radar right now, but it's not going to be like that for long. So, um, I, I just really want to send a thank you out to her, and then, um, you know. This is something that should happen uh, and should have happened years and years ago, and um, it's well needed for the sport of boxing to recognize some of the greatest athletes in the world, some of the women that uh, we all know that fighters are better athletes, um, uh, not better, but, but more challenged, more, um, uh, they're more, it's more required out of them just to be able to reach the heights that you need to be able to get into that ring, and they're the most fit uh, athletes in the world, and here we have these fantastic women champions that are not recognized, you know. And so, I mean, I'm really in awe of the whole thing. And I'm just, I'm in awe that I can be here for the first ever um, uh, induction and to be around these great, incredible, famous people and to just be a part of this. It's really fun. It is, and, and I agree with you. Um, you know, I, the, the, we, I've been talking to a lot of people the, the, all morning long. And, you know, one thing that, I, you know, I'm in the sport every day, all right? So I'm, I'm up on what's going on, of course, and all that stuff. And one thing I notice is, you know, Christy Martin is being inducted um, today. We'll, hopefully we'll have her on later or whatever. But most boxing fans think of women's boxing and immediately Christy Martin. They think that's like the beginning of it, which is right. so false. You know, it has a much more story past than that, which we'll get into later. But the thing that... Um, I see today, and I want your thoughts on it because I know you, well, we'll get to what you're doing, but I know you still train fighters and stuff like that, but what uh, my thing is today, when, and, and I'm going to call, listen, I tell it like it is, so I'm, I'm going to call it right now. Women's boxing today, what I see is I see a much stronger pool of talented female fighters. Right. Not that there wasn't talent back, you know, 10, 15, 20, even 30 years ago. But today, there just seems to be a bigger pool. The problem, in my opinion, is that the promoters aren't willing to take that chance to sign uh, a female fighter, re even though that most fans go to an event and they'll tell you that the female bout was the right. best one. They sell their own tickets. They have their own fan base. Right. Why isn't it happening? Why is it taking so long for these promoters to step up? Well, um, primarily the problem has been here in, in the United States. I mean, if you go to Mexico, if you go to Europe, I mean, we all know that Regina Homage was well promoted there and many other fighters. Susie Kentikian was promoted well. I mean, there's so, I can just run off a long chain. Uh, the Mexican fighters, of course, are being promoted great. Brazil, Argentina. Um, it's just, I think that in the United States, a lot of the conservat conservatism, conservatism of the, the the male ego, perhaps, in the sport of boxing, you know, they're still not ready to give up the sport. This is a man's sport, and they're just not quite ready yet um, to accept women fighters, and, and that's really what I think. But um, I think that they well recognize um, that, that there's a lot to be, there, there's actually a lot of money to be made in the sport as well. So, um, you know, one of the problems has been in the past, it's not the width of the, the pool of boxers, but the depth. So uh, one thing that we're having now is if... Uh, like I said, we're, we're under the radar because in the amateurs right now, that's where all of the action is. Um, if you just look back at the 2012 Olympics, Teddy Atlas said he had never in his career seen the thunder that he heard, you know, and, and seen the reaction from the fans that he heard when Katie Taylor uh, won that gold medal. So he's like, he couldn't believe it. And this is after years and years, many, many Olympics uh, um, where there were men's boxing but no women's boxing allowed. I mean, there's a lot about to happen. It's on the verge of becoming a real and legitimate sport, not just one that has, you know, a, a great fighter's daughter or, 
you know, a woman in pink or, you know, uh, someone that can, you know, maybe be on the cover of a magazine, you know. So, um, and those things are great, and they gave us some recognition, and we used it while we had to, and we did what we had to do. But things are changing now, and we're about to be recognized in a big, big way, and they won't be able to deny what we can bring to the sport. So, I, you know, it's the same thing if you look at what's happened with um, uh, Ronda Rousey and um, – in the UFC, I mean, um, she's they, the face. Yeah, she's I mean, become the face, and and so will a, a woman become the face <laughs> soon of boxing because uh, literally Dana White hates women fighters. He, he he refused to put them on for a long time, but what happened was, you know, the decline of the pay per view and things only because the market got so flooded with MMA and it got so popular so fast, and then they started to have a decline. And he he was he's a smart businessman. He said, you know, I'll try this. I don't like it, and it totally brought it back to life and. I believe that a lot of that's going to happen in boxing. You know, right now, even if you look at professional boxing, the sport has really high highs, and then it's really low for a long time. Right. You get Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather, we're going to be at a high. If you don't, we're going to surfing for a while until something comes along. Well, I really believe that once they get the really good women fighters on the major television networks and Showtime, HBO, everything's going to change, and they will do it eventually because they will have to because the, the population is going to demand it. So... Um, you know, I, I, like your question was why, and I just think it's it's just a slow running process. You know, the earth is shaking under the feet of people that have been in boxing for a long time, and they're all men, and they're just not, you know, they're not not used to this, and they're trying to figure out how they're going to handle this. You know. Well, well I, I don't know. You know, like I, I'm a fan first. You know, mm -hmm. and and I, you know, I look at the women's boxing. Um, I see that they're willing to fight a lot cheaper than men. Right. They're willing to, um, you know give their all and not back down from fights, something right. that men do. Right. They, they back down. They, they pick and choose the fights that they want. Um, it, it seems like it would be natural for the popularity of women's boxing to be excelling right now instead of, you know, us talking about what if, you know, we need this. And, and I really, you know, we can blame a lot of things. But I really think that the promoter is to blame. And, and the promoter is tied really with the networks because right. the, the promoter goes and tries to sell the show to the network. And if they're not, you know, pushing female right. fighters, you know, you're going to see that trickle-down effect, you know. And, and I, you know, I, I, I just I don't understand it. I, I think it's a shame. I hope it doesn't deter young females that are fighting in the uh, amateur ranks now to continue to move forward. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I don't think that's going to happen at all. Good. We really don't care, if you want to know the truth. Because we've been fighting <laughs> for free. Woman power. <laughs> well, I mean, we just have been fighting for free. We've been paying. I mean, my own fighters, um, I've paid for fights for them to oh. be on shows before. We fought for free. We fought, and these are professionals. We fought, um, you know, for, for much less money. When you say we're willing to, we're not really willing. We just have no choice. So, um, I mean... For them to say, you know, we stubbornly don't want you on there, we're going to wait until it happens, and it's going to happen. And, and it's only because we're determined and we're champions and we're fighters, and, you know, it's going to be hard to knock us off that quick. But, um, you know, uh, you know I, I just have to say, it's when people tell me, oh, the sport is, you know, women's boxing is on the decline since Layla Ali is gone, all that, no. No. You know, the, and, and not calling her in any way a freak show, but to the general uh, populace of promoters it's basically they use us as a sideshow so I'm gonna say that those days are over and what's happening now is legitimate contenders and fantastically skilled female fighters are coming on the scene and there's just gonna be no denying it so um, they, yes the promoters but they're gonna change you know there's a lot of these are old guys that just right don't, they're, they're don't old like ways the no no you're right <laughs> listen I work with uh, Chevelle Halbach and right. uh, we just had um, uh, a, a really big fight. You mentioned how you know you're forced to fight for free. Right. Well, Chevelle, I just did it just prior to us coming on air. I, I did an interview with uh, someone that wrote a story about Chevelle uh, that's going to be released tomorrow, and he said, is, "Is it true that she fought for less than her opponent?" I said, three times less right. than her opponent." Right. You know, that's the only way to to get that. Now, I also will admit that that's not unusual in men fight uh, men boxing as well men's uh, boxing uh -huh. as well but uh you know I, I think it i think it boils down to what we've been saying you know they need the opportunity that's it because right. they definitely put on the show one last question before uh you fill us in on what uh you're doing one of the things i've been talking about today and i want to get your opinion on it is do you think that the lack of support could be the fact that 
They women fight two minute rounds, and I never could understand why because it's almost like somebody drew the line when they said, okay, men fight three minute rounds, but women, they can only fight two. Where you know as well as I do that most women train mm -hmm. three minute rounds. Right. You know, what's your thoughts on that? Should they try to change that to three minutes? Well, I'm, I'm not um, one of the people that probably have the most popular um, opinion on that. As a woman fighter, I never had a problem with the two minute rounds because I thought that the, they made the fights more exciting. Personally, I wish men fought at two minutes, and <laughs> but that's my opinion. I just wish men fought. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. <laughs> but um, I, I mean, I, I would support the three-minute rounds. Um, but do you think that that might be a reason why people are div dividing it? Not yeah. so much male-female, but mm -hmm. you know, it's almost like they're 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 starting out at a gate with a lesser product. Mm -hmm. I really don't think that the fans know the difference um, because I've been fighting two-minute rounds all my career. I do think that um, that the ones that notice are the fighters. Um, the trainers, the boxing people, the promoters, you know, the commission. The people on the inside know about the two. I don't think that, I mean, in a pro fight, nobody announces this is a two-minute round. The, the people are just like, wow, that was so action-packed and it was over so fast. Right. You know, the average fan doesn't really pay attention, I don't think. So um, I think, you know, the maybe if anybody would be judging us, it would be our own peers and our own promoters and those kind of things. That, yeah, it kind of sissifies the sport for us, but, um, you know, I, I don't know. I guess I've, I've been around for a little while, and I'm willing to roll with the punches until we can do whatever needs to be done. One thing I don't want to happen is for women's fights to become more boring, and I don't, I don't think they will even with three-minute rounds. But, you know, in, in more, most sports, they do make a, a, a defining difference between women's and, and men's, um, you know, whether it's running or weightlifting or, you know, different things like that. So, um, I mean, I would totally support the three-minute round. I don't really think it's to blame, but I know that some people – uh, especially some of the supporters of the three-minute round for female boxing, they really feel like it's an, you know a problem in the sport. I haven't seen it, but I'm not saying it's not. So, um, I just uh, you know I, I I think you know when you hit on it just a, a second ago, I, I just think that the talent overall talent right. is so much better. Uh, not again, not that we didn't have talent you know several years back and, and longer. Right. It just seems that there's a lot more of it mm -hmm. now. So that competition, that competitive, right. those competitive fights are, are more common than not. Well, what changed that was the Olympics. I mean, that changed everything. If you go to a big tournament now, there's, there's a big tournament in the United States called the Ringside World Boxing Championships. It's a, a, a world, um, uh, it's a, you know, it's a world level um, competition. So people from other countries can come as well. And um, on, on that tournament, the, one of the biggest divisions out of all the divisions there are girls, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's good. You know, bigger than any other, even the men's divisions of other weight classes. So, and a lot of it is because they're, they're knowing now that they can have an Olympic dream. So that, I think that's really changing the sport for, for good. Terry, one last thing. What are you doing now with your career? You alluded to, you know, you're, you're working with some fighters, training fighters. Um, well, keep us up to date. Put us, put us where, where Terry Moss is right now. Right. Oh, yes, I'm really right excited. Right here. She's right here. <laughs> I'm so excited. I have some really good fighters coming up right now, and um, they're all in the amateurs right now. I have one pro that's um, semi-retired, so I have a whole new group of fighters coming up. Um, I just opened a big 15,000-square-foot gym in Atlanta called Buckhead Fight Club. It's been open about a year, and um, I'm also promoting my corporate fight night shows, which I've done. Uh, I did my eighth show here in May um, in Atlanta, and we're branching out now into other um, states, and we also plan on going to um, England uh, for a U.S. versus U.K. Um, white-collar boxing show. So my white-collar show is doing great, and one thing I do with that is I like to use the white-collar thing to introduce new people to the sport of boxing. So several of those, in fact, I brought two of my corporate boxers here to, uh, for this tournament to try their uh, go at it in, in the real boxing competition uh, level. So... Um, you know, it's, it's a good thing. I got a lot going on. That's great stuff, Terry. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, um, uh, I know that uh, we had, I, I can't, now, now you got me wondering when we were talking before, I don't know if you've been on our regular show or not. I, I thought you were, but I want you on. So uh, uh, awesome. before we leave, uh, I'll make sure we have each other's contact number Absolutely. and we'd love to have you on. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you Billy. very much Pleasure. for joining us with Thank this. You. And uh, hopefully we're going to be uh, inducting you pretty One soon. One of these too. days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Moss, former so world champion. Thank you. Um, and uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes.